Land Rover Defender or Ineos Grenadier? Nah. If you want a proper 4x4 with a touch of luxury, then there's a new king in town. And it's this, the Toyota Land Cruiser 250. And it's had the kind of retro restyle that seems all the rage, except in this case there's a pleasing lack of debate. It feels immediately right. It needs to. The Land Cruiser has been around since 1958 and has spawned more than 10 generations, so there's plenty of inspiration. So let's have a look. Super boxy surfacing. Loads of straight edges. Short overhangs. It's got a proper sense of purpose. Do you remember the FJ Cruiser of about 2006? Well, this is like its more serious, grumpier, older brother. I mean, just look at this face. It looks like a kind of happy transformer, which it actually is because Toyota has decided in their wisdom to offer it with two completely different front ends. Now, the base models, which are called Land Cruiser 1958s in a nod to the old Land Cruisers, and the first 3,000 first edition models like this one all come with the round headlights. But from the middle grades up, you get rectangular headlights, which look even more grumpy. And that's probably the only time I can think of having a car that you get two completely different front ends depending on the model. I'm not sure which one I prefer the look of, so let me know in the comments which you prefer and I'll do some sort of unscientific poll. Still, when you start looking around, there are blocky muscles all over the shop. These kind of bonnet turrets on top here, then the slab sides, even the wheel arches, which are notorious for being round, have straight lines in them. And the back is as solid looking as you might hope. Basically, where the last generation Land Cruisers had gone a bit blobby, this brings back sinew into the design, and it looks absolutely brilliant. It screams no nonsense, exactly what a Land Cruiser is all about. The project chief designer, Yoshito Watanabe, said that the theme was back to origins with new values, and reliable, timeless and professional, and I can totally see how that works here. In fact, the only car that looks more like a Land Cruiser is Toyota's own refresh of the 70 series that's going to be available in Japan. Which leaves me only a little bit conflicted. Anyway, on with the new one. The other thing to note about the new Land Cruiser 250 is that it is also not quite as big as you might think. I mean, don't get me wrong, this isn't a super mini, I'm not saying it's a small car, but it's actually seven and a half inches shorter, narrower and lower than the outgoing US model. So this isn't new car bloat. You also start with 18 inch wheels on the standard model, which is a common fitment for off-road tires, should you want them, right up to 20 inches if you're more sort of road slash style based. But the good news is Land Cruiser 250 is a global car and it will be on sale in the UK. So what's the hardware like? Well, there's permanent 4x4, obviously. But where the USA gets a 326 brake horsepower, 465 pound foot hybrid drivetrain with a 2.4 litre turbocharged four cylinder and a 1.9 kilowatt hour battery pack, the UK will get a 2.8 litre diesel four from the Hilux, meaning 204 brake and just over 400 pounds feet of torque. At least initially, a hybrid should follow later. There are other engines available in other markets, but they're all less powerful. And all Europe-bound Land Cruisers get an 8-speed auto, apart from one base engine version which makes do with a 6-speed self-shifter. There are the usual kinds of terrain modes that make easy work of whatever you're driving on through or over, and the towing ability of a small HGV. Yes, your eldest Crusader caravan will no longer be a problem. Oh, and there's remote disconnect of the anti-roll bars, so you can get a bit more wheel travel when you're off-roading without too much compromise on the way to the shops. Now this is all as it should be for a reborn Land Cruiser. The thing I like about the interior is that you get the same sense of kind of solidity and strength as you do from the external styling. So there's like everything's really big and chunky and it's got these big horizontal lines that make you feel like it's all very solid. A nice wheel here with some big chunky buttons on it for most of the functions, which is all very nice. There's a digital display up front just between the steering wheel, which seems really placed nicely. And as part of that binnacle, you get a really big touchscreen. Now it's slightly smaller in the more base models, but we don't get them in the UK. And then in this centre console, it just feels really, it's quite a masculine interior. You get this big fist 
of a kind of gear selector. And then lots and lots of big physical buttons that all have a really nice kind of proddy feel to them. This is all the HVAC, so the air conditioning and stuff like that. And then you've got wireless charging cup holders, all the usual stuff. But you'll notice all the different buttons. There's a rotary control here which allows you to select modes like the Sport, Normal and Eco, and they're the drive modes for on-road. And then when you're off-road, you can have all the usual traction aids. So there's one for deep snow, mud, sand, dirt, and automatic. Again, it's all big chunky buttons. So down here, you can switch between high and low ratios for the gearbox, and you can flick in and out of the diff lock. So this has got a rear diff lock. You can just press that button and it's a big button. So if you were wearing gloves or something like that, you just prod it and it'll all work. And then in here, you've actually got a cool box, which is handy if you're somewhere hot. But one of the things that I'm really impressed with is the design makes it feel solid and that's really exciting. And also it's got a really weirdly low belt line. So it feels like there's lots of glass here and you can see what's around you because the window comes only about up to my elbow height. And also, even though the bonnet's quite big, it's got a low dash. So it feels like this car is going to be really easy to place on the road. As for quality, I mean, it feels really nice. This is a first edition car, so it's got all the bells and whistles and it feels nice, if not absolutely stunning. I would have liked maybe a tweed interior, something that you could brush down, but that's just a small point. I think this is really exciting and it's definitely a little bit more luxurious than your usual Land Cruiser. This isn't your stripped out 40 series. Even though it's a bit shorter than Land Cruisers that have gone before, it's got a longer wheelbase, so it does feel big. You can get five or seven seat options, and there's plenty of room for rear seat passengers or a big dog. And joy of joys, there's a split tailgate, complete with this camera for the rear mirror if you've got the rear full of stuff. Then there's the electric hatch, which goes vertical, handy when it's raining, but that means no rear mounted spare. That's migrated under the boot floor. At the moment, we're looking at the first Land Cruisers hitting the UK in 2024. And even though nobody's confirmed any pricing as yet, I reckon the base models will start at about 45,000 pounds, rising to about 65 grand plus for these first editions with all the kit. But that makes it properly competitive. If you want a luxury 4x4 that can handle more than a bit of rough and tumble if you need it to. But even more than that, this is a design that honours the Land Cruiser badge, but brings it bang up to date. The king is dead. Long live the king.